we'll see that the fundamental theorem of calculus is, I mean, it's so cool. It allows us to compute these integrals really quickly now. So let's go to work on part B. The integral from 2 to 3 of e to the x dx. How do we compute this integral? We just need to know an antiderivative of the integrand. What function has a derivative of e to the x? Well, that's just e to the x. So we evaluate it at 3 and subtract its value at 2, and there's the value of the integral. And remember what the integral represents. Here's our function e to the x. So that's y equals e to the x. That's going from 2 to 3. What that integral represents is, in this case, since it's sitting above the x-axis, it's the area of that region. We just found the area of that region. It's e to the 3 minus e to the 2. Really quickly, we are able to compute the area of this region with a curved boundary using antiderivatives in connection to the integral. What about this next one? 0 to pi sine of x dx. We just need to know an antiderivative of sine of x. That's negative cos of x going from 0 to pi. So that's negative cos of pi minus minus cos of x. So that's plus cos of, and then we plug 0 in. What's cos of pi? That's negative 1. Negative negative 1 is 1. Cos of 0 is 1. So the value is 2. So there's the value of that integral. And what we found in terms of uh, geometric interpretation, our sine function looks like this, oscillates, but we're only interested going out to pi. We just found that the area under one bump of the sine function, the area is 2. So we found the area of what, you know, maybe a few lectures ago would have been conceivably a very difficult region to deal with. We found it in pretty much just one step. We just need to know the antiderivative of sine and then plug some values in. Got it. So very powerful. So let's just, let me just ask you an additional question. Additional question. What about the integral from 0 to 2 pi? of sine of x dx. What is that equal to? Well, you can work it out using the antiderivative. That's one way to do it. And that is a perfectly legitimate way to do it. I just want to also look at the diagram as well. So that's 0 pi 2 pi. From this, we might even be able to see even more quickly without doing any calculation whatsoever what the integral should be. This region and that region have the same area. We already found the area to be 2, but it really doesn't matter what the area was, because when we take the integral, it's the signed area. It's the area of the stuff above minus the area of the stuff below. Those would cancel off. And so you'd get an integral of 0. And if you work out the integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus and antiderivatives, you'll get a value of 0 as well. So just an additional thing to, to note. What about the next one? The integral from 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. We need to know an antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared. Again, this is where it really is important to know your derivatives from differential calculus, to have them at your fingertips. What function has a derivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared? That's the arctan function. Arctan of x, we're going from 0 to 1. So this is arctan of 1 minus arctan of 0. What's arctan of 1? In other words, the tangent of what angle is equal to 1? That's pi by 4. Arctan of 0, that is the question. Tangent of what angle is 0? The angle would have to be 0. And so this has a value of pi by 4. And so what this means is if we look at this function, 1 over 1 plus x squared, looks something like this. So it's y equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. And we're going from 0 to 1. We've just found the area of that region there, and it's pi by 4. So the area of this region is pi by 4.